And welcome to Our Reviews Will Kill You Gaming. That's right, I'm the man they know as Z, and I'm joined by Noob Noob, and we're delivering our final verdict on Last of Us 2. You may have played along with us or watched along as we did our two and a half to three hour walkthrough to give you an idea of what the game looked like and add some amusing commentary for you. But we're going to do an actual in-depth, spoiler-filled review to take it all the way from front to back and get a real feel for this game. I would say, and I don't know how you feel about this, new Noob, but this game was probably one of the most controversial games we've heard of in the past couple years probably yeah I, I i had controversy in my own self while i was playing i was very angry then upset and then happy and then sad and then sexually frustrated weirdly enough and then sad and then sad again yeah and then sad then more sad usually it ends with sad i'm just always the last sad. of us or no, just, just my life oh okay my life is sad so a lot of the controversy and we won't exactly get to spoilers right away, but a lot of the controversy was around the reviews and around the leaks. As the review... Well, first, initially, there were leaks about the game. And the leaks had to do with the director... Um, Neil Druckmann. Neil Druckmann and his association with Anita Sarkeesian and the social justice agenda that, that people felt was being placed into the game. There are trans characters, there are lesbian characters, there are um, several things. There's a, a little bit of what people perceived as man hate and things like that. And I, I think that the leaks, just from what I've heard and what I've seen, were a little bit overblown as to how the game handled those particular mechanics. And I do know that Neil Druckmann did say he, he pleaded with people to, to play through the game and give it a chance. How do you feel about the leaks in comparison to the actual gameplay? Yeah, so basically the leaks made it seem like it, instead of The Last of Us Part 2, it was The Last of Us Part Woke. And uh, the game does not honestly play like that at all. The, the leaks are true, technically. There is a trans character. There are several lesbian characters but they don't really beat you over the head with it. It's just kind of part of the story and uh, it worked. I mean, I wouldn't say it works well. Like it could have been fine if they weren't in there, but it's not overblown. They just organically are there. They're not, you know, you're not beaten over the head with trans characters or lesbian characters or, you know, backstories or woke agendas or anything like that. And the other thing that came out that was a little uh, bit that added to that controversy were the reviews. Essentially, the initial reviews that came out from all the major non-essential reviewing uh, agencies like IGN and things like that were like 10 out of 10. I think it initially started with a 98 on Metacritic. It did eventually settle down to a 94, which is still very high. There were some employees, former employees from IGN and other places that were saying that these are all bought and paid for. And they were saying the game's a masterpiece, brilliant, one of the best games on PS4 ever made. I, how do you feel about that? So, well, it depends on when you asked me while I was playing it. During the first couple hours, I wouldn't have agreed at all. It's yes and no. It, it is one of the best games probably for the PS4, I would say. It's top five. I'm, I, I'm trying to think of Better other Better than games. Spider-Man? Uh, the Spider-Man was the first one that came to mind on the PS4. Better than Red Dead. Yeah, well, I don't like Red Dead, so I'm a little biased. I just don't like the genre of Western, so I would take this over Red Dead any day of the week. I would disagree with that. I would say Red Dead is better. Um, GT, well, GTA came out on PS3, yeah, so GTA it doesn't really not, count. Yeah. I, I, it's at least a top Death five. Death Stranding is better. I don't like Death Stranding. You never played it, so you Production have no quality, this game is probably the top game. It's better than Red Dead. It's better than Death Stranding. Production quality, attention to How detail. So? The game is... Attention to detail. Phenomenal. All right. Well, hold on. Like, visual detail and, like, animation. Are you able to like interact that. with the environment? Is there any destructible environments? Because from what I saw, it was very limited. Well, destructible environments, no. There okay. is a it side stuff. pretty. It looked but gorgeous. It, but it, I was not like so blown away that I was like, oh my God, I was in awe. I was like, this is, it looked very nice. 
I kind of. So if, do you agree with a 94 Metacritic? Do you really think it rates that high? You don't think it's more like a B plus? No, I would say 94 is accurate. After playing it, I would say 94 is accurate. Well, maybe we will come back and break down your score and, and evaluate more, uh, especially considering the story, in my mind, is some ways broken. And um, But we'll get through. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there when we get there. So essentially what had happened was the, the Metacritic score was a 94 or I guess a 9.4. And the user reviews initially came out in, Quite the, shitty. in the threes. It's ended at a 5.1. Now, a lot of it I do think could have been blamed on review bombing. People came, you know, made it through the first two hours or so and just they were done. Out, done with the game, felt like they'd been disrespected, felt that they'd been lied to by some of the promotional materials, especially some of the early trailers that came out that implied certain characters were more involved in the story than they were. I think that those deceptive practices make for a challenging unique and i will give them credit for a risky story and i do think it's a little unfair i suspect having not completed the game myself i only made it about five hours in out of a 20 to 25 hour game i would say that i i think it's probably in the b plus range uh i think the users are a little too hard on it but at the same time, uh, I don't think it deserves 10 out of 10s and master. You can't have a masterpiece with some of the incredible con- convenient coincidences and plot holes that I'm aware of in the game. So we will get into that as we go further. Why don't we discuss a little bit about the previous story and why people love the first game so much? Because that sets the stage as to why this game is so controversial. I think this game would have gone over better as its own original story, but since it took characters that you may have fell in love with in a previous game or really, really appreciated how you played with them, and then in, in some minds disrespected and in, in other minds completely disregarded, or just were trying to push a whole totally different story, I, I, I think that that creates a lot of what the schism is here. And thematically, the two games are so completely different. Essentially, the first game is is one long escort mission, but it doesn't necessarily play like that. What what would you say that the the original game, like how how do you describe it, Noob Noob? So I'll just give a brief synopsis. So the if we're going in the game timeline, 2013, actually I think when the game was released, The Last of Us, the first one. Uh, in the game timeline, that's when the spores happened and there was a virus that basically ended mankind, much like COVID. Uh, and then you fast forward to 20 years later in 2033, and that's where you kind of pick up with Joel after losing his daughter in a very depressing opening act of, of the first game, which was fantastically done, just really depressing. And uh, that's when you meet Joel. He's a smuggler living in Boston, quarantine zone. And uh, he has a friend that has a mission for him. And it basically you meet up and the mission is escorting, like Z said, uh, a girl to the Fireflies, which is a militia group trying to save humanity. And uh, Ellie is the escort mission and she is immune. And basically it goes through the seasons. So autumn or no, it starts in summer, goes autumn, winter, and then uh, spring. And I don't know, I guess late in the year. Basically, you're (laughs) just escorting Ellie to the fireflies across the country, which is cool. Uh, Joel is super shitty in the beginning, doesn't care about anything, lost his daughter, just basically surviving, became a shitty human being. Ellie, smart aleck, asshole, 14-year-old, angsty girl. They have a great dynamic, and it evolves over the course of the game, and that was probably the best thing about the game was the character interactions. So they had character arcs. You had a broken man who forges his bond with a sort of a surrogate daughter on some level because it's just the two of them as they cross the country and and try to accomplish their goal. So you have actual character development where 
Um, essentially, Ellie is is a orphan, right, and has like no real familial connection, and is really just kind of like floating on her own with no guidance. And here's Joel, same thing, a man floating with no real guidance or no real companionship and uh, kind of a broken down man. And the two of them forge this very strong, unique bond of, uh, like I said, surrogate father-daughter bond. And that's the main theme of the, of the story. So as, as they go along, eventually, um, spoiler for the end of the first game, uh, Joel, it, it's either sacrifice Ellie for the sake of mankind because she has to die to provide the cure or keep her as his surrogate daughter. And um, he decides to not tell her the truth about what he does. He decides to, to protect her and ends up murdering uh, the fireflies and the people who were going to attempt to find this cure for the disease. And that's where the next story picks up is shortly after that, where he, he admits that he did not tell Ellie about his decision to save her when she was 14, mind you. And that's where I think some of the controversy also comes in is that relationship is slightly further explored for for seemingly no real reason i mean it doesn't make a lot of sense to me um we'll we'll get into it Let, let's let's move past that so we've caught you up to where the the game begins the uh, let's talk about the gameplay mechanics because as i went through the first i guess i played 5 hours technically the, our walkthrough was about 2 and a half to 3 and i, I made it through 5 I was frankly bored. Um, it seemed a lot like, you know, you would st- stealth into a room. Uh, as far as I was concerned, the AI was incredibly stupid. The a- Your AI partner at the time, Dina, is incredibly stupid. She would walk into rooms and just start shooting things or stumble into clickers. And I just, I felt like the gameplay was not that much enhanced from the previous version. I thought the fighting mechanics of adding a dodge button and all that was kind of interesting, but I just did not really get into it. I, I would have been, after my five hours, I was not that interested in continuing playing. So what wh- what would you say? Uh, so I'm going to go back to one thing that's going to be important when we go back into story elements. Uh, for, for Last of Us Part 1, there was a part where Joel, he goes in and saves Ellie, and Marlene, one of the people he was working with to deliver her, Uh, confronts him and he shoots her and she's begging for her life and he's about to escape with Ellie and then she's like just let me live and he's like you'll just come after her and shoots her right in the face so that that's going to be a a key part to to re-bring up for part two once we get into that story but uh for the gameplay I think the gameplay is similar but enhanced for part two I didn't mind it at all. The first part that we played in our playthrough, if you watched, was horrible. Very slow moving. All you did was sneak around, do dumb shit, stab some, uh, what are they called? Spores, clickers, uh, infected, hunters, whatever. Then it progresses later in the game. So it becomes more action oriented. You have some options to sneak around. You can technically go through a lot of the levels and try to avoid combat altogether. They say that that's an option. It's near fucking impossible. If you try to do that, you're most likely going to die or you have infinite patience. I don't have infinite patience. So a lot of the times what happens is you start sneaking around, stealthily kill a couple enemies, get caught, and then go guns blazing and go ape shit and start murdering everybody. That's kind of how I played the game. It was entertaining and, and had a lot of thrilling experiences, so I, I didn't mind it at all because it does give you varied options with weapons and attachments and stuff like that, so I I didn't mind it. Did you end up... Uh, I know there's an element where they add dogs that can smell you. Did you <sighs> find that part to be challenging, interesting, or a waste of time? All of the above. So, yes, a lot of the... Well, not a lot of the game. I'd say a solid 50% of the game, there are dogs, and they they can sense you, or they they can smell your scent, and they track you. 
technically you don't need to murder the dogs. And you, you can, they stink. I mean, Ellie, we, we, we can suspect from. Yes. And that's Dina, sexy. They, yeah. they smell like pussy. Huh. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the dogs are there and you have to kind of, you don't have to, but I had to murder a lot of dogs in this game. Wow. That must've been very depressing for you. Yeah, well, what's more depressing, and I think we'll get into that part of the story element later, they make you feel real bad, or they try to manipulate you into feeling real bad about murdering the dogs because of oh, the, yes. the way they kind of play the story element. But uh, I, I would not want to murder a dog, but if you try to just get by without doing it, you're going to die a whole lot. And I don't have the patience, so I... But I, I bit the bullet and uh, murdered a lot of dogs. Wow, you just went dog murdering. I did. It sounds I, like a dog murder simulator. Full Michael Vick. Full Michael Vick. I just, I don't think that sounds that entertaining there, Noob Noob. I didn't like it. And the but dogs, you got done what you had to get I, done. I did. I just didn't think about it. I'm like, hey, it's another person that's just furry. Mm. And I have to shoot him with a shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So... I, I found the gameplay to be a little clumsy too when she's trying to like turn around and she's backing away from stuff. Like I've just played better games with more responsive controls. Uh, I mean, if you liked the first game gameplay, first Last of Us gameplay, that is, it's not that much different. So, th- so throwing bricks at things is, is your all your bag. And throw mm. bricks through windows and dumb shit like that. See, I, well, again, this is me just being an apologist for the game, but you're not real. It's like a post-apocalyptic world where you're not really trained. Well, some people aren't trained. You're not trained. You're a 90 pound maybe soaking wet, maybe 110 pounds soaking wet She's not teenage girl. Pounds. Teenage girl. She has hormone powers. And she, how many people do you think you had to murder in that game? Oh my God. Yeah. It, you do lose a sense of realism when you're playing as Ellie. Spoiler alert. There is more than one playable character in this game. Uh, but she goes full like T3000. She's a fucking Terminator. And you, you, you just wouldn't be able to kill that many people as a 90 pound girl. She just murders cl- like the clickers is one thing, but the people she mows through a fucking army of human beings as a girl, like not even there's sections where you're just her. Like there's no help. There's no anything. You're just murdering human beings with machine guns that are better trained. Technically, it's just a little unrealistic at that point. But because Ellie's never had any technical training. She's just a survivor. Just like, well, Joel trained her to, I mean, it's not like but she's they also un- lived in Jackson for four years doing nothing. J- yeah. Joel was whittling. That's how much no. excitement he had. He wasn't whittling. He definitely was because we went in his house. Well, he's he and making just, guitars. He Lots of guitars. He wasn't making guitar. Can you even make guitars? Yeah, in the absolutely. Apocalypse? How are you going to make a guitar? Use a lathe. What is that? Oh, it's a woodworking inch thing. Lube? Tool. Using lube to make no, guitars? No, not lubes. So anyway, so as here's where the controversy begins, and, and let's talk about spoilers. We're gonna we're gonna go full spoilers at this point, obviously. So the the basic plot is takes place four years after the initial game, and essentially what happens is you don't really get to play as Joel, but Joel goes out on patrol and by some random coincidence runs into the exact person who wants to murder him. They end up going back to his camp, or he, they go back to the, the murder people's camp, which would be Abby and her crew, and proceed to get murdered because, you know, you just give it, you trust every person who comes to your camp, especially considering that they've dealt with cannibals and uh, all sorts of factions of cults and things like that. Yet, with the first time you meet somebody, you're like, yeah, here's my name. This is who I am. And, uh, yeah, why don't you kill me, please? Um, yeah, kinda. So there's a lot of inconsistencies with the character development in this game, basically just to make this story happen. One of which is Joel in the first game is he is kind of a war torn person that has survived 20 years in this 
post-apocalyptic world. He's a professional smuggler. Yes. So he's not a very trusting person. He's very smart and keen on what information he lets, you know, slip and all that stuff. And then this game, he's just like, you know what? These people I've never met before. Hey, my name is Joel. How are you doing today? So another part of contention with this whole thing, which is a little strange, is... You know, and I, 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 I did not get to play through the parts where they have flashbacks to Ellie and Joel's relationship. But according to what I under, what I'm understanding from you is that their relationship was extremely fractured by the time this story rolls around. Yes. Yes. But there's a caveat, which we'll get to. OK. So anyway, uh, Abby murders Joel with a golf club. But then decides to leave Joel's brother, Tommy, and Ellie alive just so that they can come hunt her down. Yes, which, and this is kind of the point I made of of Joel's decision in the ending of The Last of Us with Marlene. He didn't want to kill Marlene. She was, for all intents and purposes. Did she betray them, though? Uh, I'm pretty sure she did because she lied about who they were and what their intentions were. Not really i mean she was the one that was like he deserves to know that ellie is going to be basically sacrificed for the the good of humanity but a- anyway so he shoots her and she's begging for her life and she's technically an innocent bystander to a degree in the story uh, he could have escaped without killing her but he makes it a point to say you will just come after her and then shoots her right in the face Not that he wanted to kill her technically, but he knew that they would not be safe if he let them live, let her live. And this exact scenario was presented in The Last of Us 2. And uh, they they made the opposite choice, which, you know, technically fuels the story because there wouldn't be a story if, if Ellie gets murdered right in the beginning. But still, the decision making is a little questionable. I also don't understand how Abby's camp and her crew felt. So they're hiding at this snow mansion. How exactly did they think they were going to get into Jackson to murder Joel anyway? And why did like six people come with her? Do they explain any of that? They do. So essentially, uh, just a quick synopsis is there was just a vague lead that was Tommy's uh, Joel's brother Tommy was in a city in Wyoming, Jackson. No, no mention of Joel whatsoever. So they were technically going to find Tommy to see if Tommy knew where Joel was. That's it. And Tommy would give up where his brother was so that yes. they could murder him. There was no concrete evidence, no anything. But Abby in, in this state, and you, then I'll will explain the point of her revenge later. Uh, but. Abby was in a state of she didn't care. She just wanted to find this Joel no matter what the cost. And there was no definitive explanation. Did she have a last name for him? Who? Joel. No, she didn't. She just knew a guy named Joel. Yup. A man named Joel. Mm -hmm. So any Joels that she found, she would murder. I guess so. So here comes comes my, my next point is so... You play as Ellie going on this revenge mission because because Tommy, the brother, decides to leave and he goes. Right. And then Ellie's like, I'm going to go. And then Dina, who's uh, Ellie's lover, even though she was with another guy before that for a week, also decides to go. Mm -hmm. Right. So here I'm thinking about this and I'm going. how, How did Abby know that she killed the right guy? First of all, and then if she knew the reason as to why Joel killed everyone, because you'd think she'd know that. And here's the point is, so the whole reason why Abby is after Joel is because Joel murdered her father. Her father was the surgeon who was going to operate on Ellie and Ellie's on the operating table and Joel murders him, right? Yes. Okay. So if she knew what her father was doing and knew that this Joel character took a woman with him or a girl, like why would they leave Ellie alone? Ellie is the cure yet. All their only concern was I'm going to come here and I want to murder a man named Joel. Any Joel. 
It's yeah. very thin. It's very thin. It's just like she wanted specific revenge. She against was, any Joel she could find. Like an eye for an eye. Yes, I get that. Like Hammurabi's code. I, I understand that. What I'm asking is, how the fuck did she know who that, that was the right Joel? And if it was the right Joel, would she not want to finish her father's work on some level? Well, what do you mean? Like complete the surgery? Didn't she reform the fireflies? Like, aren't they still out there? Isn't that like a whole side plot with Owen and the whole thing? No, not really. Sort of, it- not in the context that you just described, but... The fire. So Abby is part of the wolves, which is a different thing entirely from fire from fireflies. Well, the fireflies were decimated, but they were going to yes. reform the fireflies. They were trying to reconnect with remnants of the fireflies in a different part of the country, which we'll get to later. But I wouldn't say that. Uh, well, technically, the the loophole that they use in the story was that Abby's father was the only human being alive good enough to complete the surgery. Oh, okay. so his death essentially ended all possibilities of a cure. So regardless of having uh, Ellie at, at, at any point in time, the point that Abby's father is dead kills any potential cure. Even though they could travel around the country and try to find somebody else. Technically, yeah, sure. Okay. So I and I, I think the whole point is this is this is the point in the game where most people rage quit and just said I'm done. If you watch our walkthrough, you'll close. see. Yeah, you'll see Noob Noob was he was destitute. And that was he, the third time I watched that. If you're if you watched our walkthrough, I was dead inside. I I've never hated a game more after two hours of playing than this game at that point. So that's where the the majority of your reviews are going to come in. You're going to see people saying how much they hate this game because they love the Joel character. You played Joel for 25 hours in the last game, and, and you come in... hours. How long was the last game? 15 hours? 15 hours. All right, so for Noob Noob, 35 hours. Okay. So anyway, you play as this character, and this is why people were very, um, you know, torn. And the marketing implied that Joel was a bigger part of the story, when in reality, he dies in the first two hours or so and you don't get to actually play as him he's still in it somewhat you don't get to play as him you don't well no the the game was never shy about showing that ellie was the protagonist that's not something that it's tried to mask that joel was going to be the main focus it always showed that ellie was going to be the main person but it did try to show that joel was still around and uh, he, he not around after very shortly. He, he died. He did. So the game after about, what, 10 hours flips you on your head as you play Ellie in her quest for revenge. You go through Seattle to hunt down Abby and the wolves. And you then restart the game as Abby and her side story. And what I think the point of the game is they're trying to manipulate you into feeling bad about everything that Ellie has done and her unique brand of justice. It devolves into simple revenge. Yes. Yes. I, I would agree. So the first, so once they killed Joel, I wanted every single human being in that room that was with uh, Abby to die at a horrible, horrible death. And the next three chapters, which is basically Seattle day one, two, and three is Ellie. You were just going through with Ellie and Dina and mowing down every person you possibly can find that is connected to Abby to try to find Abby and murder her as well. So, and I was quite happy with doing all the murder sprees. And then there's that what kept you going in the game because you were ready to not play it anymore. No, yeah, to that point, I wanted to kill Abby. And so you're playing as Ellie. You're just mowing through everybody. You're, there's a couple of key scenes, some really fucked up scenes, too, uh, in, in Seattle where Ellie kills a pregnant woman who probably shouldn't have been out anywhere near. You combat. mean like Dina, who was also pregnant, who should not have been out on a murder spree with... We- Ellie in the first place? Well, you don't find out she's pregnant until she tells you she's pregnant after she's already here. So, Well, you should send her home. Probably, but 
She shouldn't have gone in the first place. Do you think a pregnant woman would be like, yeah, let me ride um, horseback for several days to get to, you know, Seattle to go hunt down these murderers of people that I barely know. No, I didn't say it was a good decision, but it's an even worse decision to have a girl that's straight up full pregnant, at least second trimester, going on these excursions and missions where she could possibly be murdered or bitten or captured. Because you would think that babies would be in short supply in this world and they would be the most important resource that anyone could think of in the world is... Why bother living if you can't rebuild humanity? What's the point? Pretty much. So you would think that someone who is pregnant would be absolutely protected and kept out of danger. You would think. So yeah. this, And she was a doctor, so she was even more vitally important. Wow. Your doctors are obviously in short supply in this, uh, this post-apocalyptic world. So there's a lot of dumb decisions in this game, is what you're saying? Yes, basically to forward the specific narrative they chose, kind of, yeah. So they had a very specific idea in mind, and that's where I think many of the reviews are saying it's it's a little cheap and manipulative. How they go out of the, their way to show how altruistic Abby is, even though she literally beats a man to death with a golf club, which I can't think of a more extreme, you know, is one thing, first she shoots him, in the knee to torture him. With a shotgun. Basically takes off his leg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then beats him. To, like, instead of just killing him, which would have been f- made more sense, she, like, you know, hauls town with him with a golf club. Yeah, she straight up tortured him. Like, Joel did not really want to kill his fa- or her father. He was just, he was trying to save Collateral Ellie. Collateral damage. Yeah. And then she went out of her way to just fuck him up. But she didn't even know if that was the right Joel. Uh, yeah, I guess she never te- confirmed it. Technically, that's true. I mean, yeah, I guess so. What were some of the other shocking plot points to the game that, that you felt were shocking? I guess uh, shocking. I well, know there's several sex scenes, which is fine. I, I wasn't too. Yeah, the sex scene doesn't. I mean, I guess technically you see tits. What? If you call them tits. What? Peck tittles. I would like to call them peck tittles. I think we need context here. So Abby, uh, who one of uh, our our reviewers that we watch, critical drinker, calls her gigantor. I'll call her She Hulk. Uh, she she a big bitch. And when the sex scene happens, Owen, her love. Well, interest, is it a kind of a question as to whether or not? Because there was leaks of a transgender character. And I think a lot of people assumed that Abby was the transgender character. To be honest, I see, I didn't read the leaks. I knew the leaks happened. I avoided them at all costs because I trusted Naughty Dog. I, I thought Naughty Dog has, Trust not the re- dog. has not released a bad game that I can remember. And Last of Us might be my favorite story driven game of all time. So I was just like going to ignore the spoilers, going to just play the game. Trust that they're not going to make a piece of shit. And uh, in the beginning, I thought they made a piece of shit. And when I saw Abby, she's got some some heft to her. I thought that she might have been a dude like, you know, maybe Amber. They went out of their way to design her to be very ambiguous. She was husky sexuality or not even sexuality. Let's just say gender because her sexuality is kind of irrelevant, not not pointed to until later in the story. Yeah, I, I, there was the flashback scenes with Abby when she was younger that made me question because I, I thought myself, so I knew that the transgender character existed in the story. I thought for sure it was Abby after I saw the hulking biceps. And uh, I, I, when you had a flashback of her as a kid, I was like, okay, this she wouldn't have transitioned this early, so it, this doesn't make any sense. I'm a little confused here. But she got real big real quick. And I don't know how, because in a post-apocalyptic world, where the fuck are you getting the protein, let alone the weights, to just build that muscle mass? Like, she is, she's basically an Olympic lifter at this point. 
as a female, like she could break a man in a half. She would fist fuck me to death. Honestly, so I what's the sex scene. The sex scene is Owen, her love interest in the game just basically takes her from behind and uh, you take off her shirt and you, you do see tits. Do you tech. take it off? Owen takes off her like, shirt. Okay. So why did you say you? What? Well, I imagined it was me. Oh, okay. She's so sexy. But uh, yeah, so this. she basically, they're in a nice sensual aquarium setting. They lock eyes, they kiss, and uh, you know, the most romantic position is getting fucked from behind, right? So oh, they just okay. go ahead and do that. And um, yeah, you see her peck titties. Her peck titties. Which are pectorals slash titties because she's so jacked. She don't really have boobs. She just has like peck titties. Okay. Yeah. It was it wasn't honestly as as uh, bad as a screenshot leak as you would see. Like it just kind of happens like it, it, there's nothing wrong with it. I didn't I didn't have a problem with it. So it wasn't that shocking. It's more shocking that you you're forced to play with someone that you despise. And yes. I think that that's actually I will say I'll venture to say that's a daring decision by the director. Not only I think it's a little bit of uh, hmm, bait for you to kill for them to kill off uh, your, one of your primary characters that, that people like they knew that that would cause controversy. But they use it in a way to get their point across about this story about revenge and the pointlessness of the cycle of violence where violence begets violence begets violence. There are some other weird points to it, though, where Abby literally sacrifice or she doesn't sacrifice, but she lets Ellie live again only for Ellie to come back and try to kill her again. And that does not make a ton of sense to me. Yeah, so... Uh... The game definitely has some some questionable decisions. So Ellie gets... Uh, there's a confrontation, which is Seattle Day 3, that you have to spend 20 hours getting to because you get to Day 3 with Ellie and then you reverse time and play as Abby and get to Day 3. And that's the confrontation. So uh, Ellie is spared in the initial confrontation where Joel's murdered. Ellie works through her revenge, finds Abby, and... Uh, they have a confrontation again. Abby being the she Hulk. She is beats the living shit out of Ellie and is about to brutally murder Dina in front of her and then probably kill Abby or kill Ellie. Dina, a pregnant woman. Yes. Dina. Pre- well, which was a really fucked up moment. I was for a second. I was like, Oh shit, this game's going real fucked up. So Abby beats Ellie basically chokes her into submission and then grabs Dina and Ellie is pleading, like, please don't kill her. She's pregnant. And Abby was like, good. And then is about to slit her throat open. And then Dev or Lev, 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 who was actually the transgender character, yes, which I guess a transgender. We'll kid. maybe go into uh, was like, don't do it. And Abby's like, you know what, Lev, you cool. I'm gonna listen to you. And is like, I never want to see you again, Ellie and leaves. And spares her again, not thinking that, hey, you know, sh- you know, when we let her live, she came, try to kill me. You know what I'm going to do? Let her live. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to hope she doesn't try to kill me again. You know what she does? Tries to kill her again. Although the second confrontation, Ellie gets the upper hand because Abby has been in an internment camp or is like a slaver camp. Yeah. So like- she's not in her top form. Yeah, that was a little weird. So she lost after, all her muscles. After the Seattle confrontation, it kind of fast forwards a bit. Ellie Dina has her baby, right? Well, yeah, she has her Asian baby, Asian Jewish baby, Jew Asian, uh, Blasian, Blasian. No, that's not black. The baby wasn't black. Uh, Jason. So, did they name the baby Jason? Did they actually? I forget the baby's name. <laughs> the father's name was Jesse. He dies, by the way. Doesn't. Every man in this game die. Unceremoniously so. Tommy like, oh. dies. Nope. Tommy doesn't die? He does not die. I'm pretty sure I saw footage of Tommy getting shot. I'm pretty doesn't sure Abby I shoot played him in the, the game. Head? She does, but he lives. Oh, get the F out of here. He does. How does he live? Is he crippled for life? He's got, he walks with a limp. Even though he got shot in the head. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about uh, Jason? Who's Jason? Not Jesse, Jay, the baby. <laughs> Jesse. Jesse dies. Okay. 
Jesse dies mid conversation. Oh, okay. Just like uh, a lot of the people on Ellie or Abby's side, Manny, who was uh, part of the hit group of Joel, but uh, you come to kind of like him, sort of, on the Abby side of the gameplay, and he just dies mid sentence too Owen. by Tommy. Owen dies. Owen dies. Which the pupper dies. Yeah, the pupper dies. A lot of puppers die, to be honest, but the one pupper dies. They let you, like, really feel for this pupper, and then you go and murder the puppers. Yeah. So So do you think that that's manipulative? Like, they deliberately are playing on you to be like, you're going to hate yourself playing this game. Yeah, the game's kind of manipulative in in its story, direction, choices, and the reveals. It makes you... It positions itself to force you to... feel empathy which works honestly like i after i play this game i kind of sat in silence i was like what the fuck just happened so it works it's manipulative for sure it it definitely leads you down a path of questioning who's right and who's wrong and there really isn't a good answer to that but once you finally realize the the final reveal of the story it kind of uh invalidates everything to a degree. So let's talk about the the very end of the story because I, I have a point that I want to bring up here. Sure. So as far as I understand it, um, the two women fight again mm-hmm. as Ellie decides to seek revenge for the third time. Yes. It fights Abby in non-She-Hulk form after two weeks of containment. She loses thousands of years of muscle mass. Even though... She's not real happy with Joel, but she still feels like she has to avenge his death. Even though she yes. said she wouldn't talk to Joel anymore. To, yeah, I mean, I can break that down a little further, but yes, to this point, yes. Okay, so she and they end up fighting, and Ellie gets crippled, right? She gets her fingers bitten off, from what I understand. Uh, so, yeah, they're fighting in the river. So uh, this was kind of cool, honestly. So the opening segment... They did it better in uh, Death Stranding, by the way. No, they didn't. They actually, when they you're, did. They just walked a lot. Nope. So when you're playing, when you're loading the screen of, of Last of Us 2, there's just a boat tied to a, a post. And this is that scene. So they're escaping... And it's the boats tied to this post after all this really fucked up shit happens. And they're trying to escape the Rattlers, which is just another faction that's kind of thrown in just to be fucking slaughtered like pigs, honestly. <laughs> and uh, that was the most unrealistic part. Like Ellie goes absolutely ape shit and just murders everybody in the Rattlers. Like it's insane how many people you kill. It's just room after room after room of killing people. And these are heavily armed people with face guards and masks, so you can't even headshot them for gameplay purposes. You murder probably 50 to 100 people in a compound as a 90-pound girl. Like, it's insane, honestly. But um, She's the Terminator. Yes. So back to the final fight. So you rescue Abby. So Abby is being held hostage by the Rattlers. Just to kill her. You rescue her and, and Lev, who is the transgendered person that, that plays a prominent story part at, when you're playing as Abby. And, and I honestly, I didn't, didn't mind it at all. Like, they didn't overplay the transgender part. It, it worked well within the story to a degree. You know, you, you weren't beaten over the head with it or you weren't, you know, mm-hmm. transgender politics, whatever. So, you know, she's trying to escape with Lev and Ellie's like, Oh yeah, I freed you, but I want to fight you to the death. And Abby's just like, nah, I'm good. Like we've learned my lesson. Like we no more fighting. Just can we just fucking live? And she's like, you know what? I'm going to kill Lev if you don't fight me. So Abby's like, fine, fuck it. I'll fight you. So there's like a 90 second fight where unevenly. So Abby doesn't have any weapons. Ellie's like, you know what? Fight me, but I'm going to have a knife and then just cut you to pieces. Oh, so she just nice. starts slashing the shit out of her, stabs her in the Who arm. Who are you playing as at this point? You're playing as Ellie. Okay. And you're just slashing the shit out of Abby, who looks basically like Ellie at this point after losing all of her muscle mass in two weeks. And she has two visions. One, while she's beating the shit out of her, she has a vision of Joel being bloodied and dead. Then she gains the upper hand with Abby. 
after Abby bites her fingers off, which I, I feel like it takes a lot more force to bite bone. Abby off of bites whose fingers off? Oh, Ellie's Abby fingers. bites Ellie's fingers off. Okay. Yeah. In, in a struggle in this final fight, Abby bites two fingers off of Ellie's hand, which I don't know a, if she would have had the strength to do that at that point. She's B, hungry. Art. I, I know the teeth are one of the most powerful things in, in a human body, but still to rip off someone's bone and fingers like clean off. I don't know if it would have happened that quickly. Like that seems a little excessive, but it played a point in the story. So I think that was a little, little manipulative as well. So Abby is basically getting drowned by Ellie at this point, And she has another flashback that reveals kind of something that invalidates the entire story. It's right before they go off into this rescue mission and, and the, the mission that basically leads to Joel's death. It's the night before they had this fight. Dina kissed uh, Ellie. Joel stepped in, punched it or kind of got angry and they were fighting and, and Ellie visits him later that night. You mean Dina, who is dating a guy? At that no, she's point. not dating him. They were broken up for a week at that point. Oh, okay, a whole one whole week. Yes, one whole week. Okay. She's pregnant, by the way. She doesn't know that yet, or maybe right. she does know that. I'm not sure. They weren't very clear. That's kind of a jerk move. They weren't very clear when she knew she was pregnant. Okay. Anyway, so she visits Joel at his house, and they talk about basically the the main thing. And I think we kind of skipped over this part that Ellie finds out that Joel basically killed any chance of the cure to save her. And, and I'm, I'm going to bring this up in, into a, a bigger point later, but I'm just going to get through the story point right now. So they talk and uh, that relationship is fractured at that point in the story and, and has been for years. And it kind of comes to a bubble point once he steps in and just tries to defend Ellie. So Dina kisses Ellie at a basically a farmer's dance or whatever the fuck they want to call it. And this super do douche who serves bigot sandwiches comes in and says, we don't want dykes at this family event. So Joel being a loving father comes in and was like, yo dude, don't fuck you. Like, what are you doing? Ellie, instead of being mad at the guy that says dyke gets mad at Joel for defending her. So fuck you. You're an asshole, Ellie. And, uh, so then she comes back later that night and starts talking to Joel about that. And basically what it comes to is they have a conversation saying, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to forgive you for what you did, meaning saving her life and yeah, that's sacrificing the cure. Mm -hmm. And Ellie's main point was she wanted the choice and she's, she was a 14 year old girl at that point. So I don't know why she would be able to choose to suicide herself essentially. Yeah. No 14 year old would have the autonomy or the right mind, right mental acuity to make that decision. No 14 year old is, has those decisions. So I don't know why she'd think she'd be allowed to choose whether or not she got to live or die. Yeah, so obviously Joel chose to want to save her because he basically became her surrogate father at that point. So I, it, he wasn't in the wrong. Like he made a questionably, a moral, morally questionable decision, obviously, but I don't think he was wrong in any way for wanting to save what he thought to be his daughter at that point. So, so that, why would she be so upset? So then that connects to why would she be so upset when he gets murdered? Yes, so basically you're led to believe throughout this whole game that they had this fight at that event and they ended things on bad terms. So she basically, the last thing that you your thought that she said to Joel was like, basically, fuck you, get out of my life. Like, don't try to defend me. And then he gets brutally murdered. So the flashback right before she's about to murder Abby was the session where she goes to visit Joel later that night. And she says that she's not able to forgive him, but she's willing to try and move on. So basically there is that level of they're willing to try to work on their issues and move forward. Like they still love each other and they were working towards a solution. So it, by no means was it a fractured she, relationship. She said, I mean, it was fractured to a degree, but not like broken but not broken to where they lead you to believe this entire game. They lead you to believe the entire game that this was, he died basically without her being able to say, Hey, you know, I, I appreciate you. I love you for what you did, all that stuff. 
it was a completely broken relationship. You learn at the very, very end of the game that sure it was broken to a degree, but they, they were on the road to amends. So why would she make all these decisions knowing this? I don't really know. It was effective while you were playing the game. After thinking about it, it makes it a little less effective as a whole. I still think the story was very poignant and dark and nihilistic, but that kind of undermines a lot of the story, to so be honest. The very end, though, is with Abby leaving with Lev, correct? Yes. Alive. That's the last you see of Abby. And then you have Ellie attempting to play Joel's guitar minus her fingers. Dina has left her. She's no longer there. She took her baby and left, right? Yes. She went so, back to Jackson or whatever. You don't really know, technically. So just a brief recap. So before Ellie goes on her third final murder mission to Abby, she's living happily ever after with Dina after Abby spares her life. So they're living on a farm, happy with to the lucky, baby. with a baby. They kind of have the, to a degree, the perfect picturesque life as much as you can as a post, in a post-apocalyptic world. And Tommy comes and is like, hey, we found where Abby is and you need to go kill her because I'm crippled from when she shot me in the head and I somehow survived. <laughs> in so, a post-apocalyptic world with no doctors. Oh, yes. Okay. And you go through this beautiful, beautifully visualized scene where she has PTSD and, and the, she's, you know, getting lambs and, and sheep together and stuff. It's, it's honestly one of the most gorgeous scenes I've seen in a video game ever. But it basically articulates that she's not over Joel being murdered and she has to go revenge him and kill Abby. And Dina is pleading with her one second. Well, no, she she basically says, you know what? Come back to bed. We we got a good life. Come back to bed. And then two minutes later, she's like, I can't do this again. If you leave, I'm done. Like, fuck you. So that was quick. That sounds consistent with characters. Not consistent at all. So, yeah, then she comes back after trying to murder Abby and then realizing at the very last second, hey, I was going to forgive Joel for saving my life. So I don't know why you're forgiving him in the first place. I'm going to forgive Abby for killing Joel because reasons, reasons, reasons pretty much. And And uh, I'm going to lose Dina and my perfect life because I decided to make this decision. Yup. She so, goes. Go ahead. So she comes back. Dina is gone. She attempts to play Joel's guitar, finds she can no longer do this, and walks off into the wilderness alone, correct? Yeah, and that's how the game ends. And that's how the game ends. So you have this extraordinarily nihilistic ending. And one thing that when I found out about this ending that I found to be extraordinarily just manipulative and also I don't know why they decide, you know, look, it's risky. I I kind of get where they're going and I appreciate the fact I will give them credit for going with the risk and trying to make this really, really dark story. But one of the most joyful parts of the game is about five or so hours in you can play the guitar and you could free play the guitar and it's a really kind of interesting factor and people really enjoy it. They really love this, this concept. So you can look up online, go look, check out YouTube videos of people just playing the guitar. They're just strumming it. They can play cover songs. There's a really good, you could do a really good version of uh, Johnny Cash covering Hurt by Nine Inch Nails and uh, a bunch of other songs. I've heard Danny California and uh, you play a whole bunch of interesting things. And it's a really kind of cool feature that you can get lost in and people really, really enjoyed. So here you take one of the most enjoyable features of the game and then the very end of the, of the game, you basically destroy Ellie's ability to even play the guitar to add to the nihilism. And I find that to be uh, bizarre. Not hypocritical necessarily, but what a bizarre choice. Like that just does not make any sense to me. I don't understand why this mechanic that you knew people, you put spent a lot of time and effort on putting this mechanic into the game, why you would take such care to create something so fascinating as the ability to strum and play this acoustic guitar and they knew people would do it, but then at the same time destroy that at the end. Like what 
I, I enjoy a dark story as much as anybody, but I'm highly confused by the choices and manipulations that go on in this game. Yeah. So the game seemed like, after I kind of thought about it for a little bit, it went out of its way to be as dark as possible. And basically, there's no happy endings for anyone. It kind of makes you empathize with both sides. So both Abby and Ellie, neither were bad nor good. They were making, in their mind, justifiable decisions to to revenge the people that they've lost. And yeah, it, it just basically it's a story driven by anger and revenge that just shows an escalation to where you lose everything that was good in your life. And it's really fucked up. And so here's a fascinating comparison. People love The Walking Dead. It was one of the most popular shows on television. And then The Walking Dead stopped, li- stopped the story about what made it fascinating, which was the people building the world after this apocalypse, almost the same story, zombies, whether it be, uh, you know, spores and cyanophores or, or whatever the, uh, the mushrooms called, I forget off the top of my head. What's the, uh, what's that mushroom called? It's like cyanophores. Let me look it up here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so you have a very similar story and instead of following the story and making the zombies, part integral to the story they seem like they're absolutely irrelevant they're there as an obstacle they're not scary they're basically just walls you have to get past because there's nothing horrifying or scaring about them scary about them at this point and you have to deal with the story a petty human story of revenge and where did the walking dead go wrong stop paying attention to the zombies started going too far to the human element And that's like the point is that people want to see the zombie story. They don't care about your petty human revenge story, especially when we're talking about um, when did the ratings drop off after uh, Negan came in and he started just killing people for no particular reason. And the plot kind of like meandered into nothing. Yeah. The highest rated episode was the Negan premiere episode where he killed Glenn and then it just kind of tailed off. Yeah. That's where I bailed. I stopped watching after that, but uh, the mushroom they're called quarterceps. They actually exist. You can eat them. They're, they're quite tasty and actually give you brain function. So eat some quarterceps and don't be afraid of becoming a zombie. But my point is, is that they took this zombie story essentially where the entire first mo- uh, first book book movie game is about you know escorting this girl for the cure and then the human element is just tied to the plot of the game where this game the human element is the plot of the game do you see where i'm going yeah technically yeah i mean that's true so i could see where there's a huge disconnect between I think it's 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 fascinating because clearly it haunted you. I've heard other reviewers. It's kind of a haunting game. It, it sits with you for a while, and you have to think about it. My problem becomes that I guess my question is posed to you then. If you look at all the flaws and the problems with the story and the conveniences and the manipulation, but also the positives of the good, the good graphics the haunting nature of the story that it sits with you and all the other things. Do you still think that this game, A, is it a masterpiece or is B, it's a really good game, but I don't appreciate the manipulations. I would say the first game is a masterpiece. This game is a step below because it's still like, it's still like I acknowledge that it was really manipulative but when you're playing it without knowing the direct manipulation, because you don't really realize that until the very end. I think you'd have to be pretty stupid to not know that you're being manipulated, noob noob. Because I got bored knowing that I was being manipulated. And now I knew some of the spoilers, but I did not know the whole end of the game. When I read the plot of the game and, and discussed it with you, I was like, this is incredibly stupid. So the, the problem is that you can think of several different ways to, you know, progress this story forward that it kind of accomplish the same goal, but also make the characters more true to what they were in the first game and, and basically serve a better purpose. And this game, 
didn't go any of those directions. They just went the nihilistic way and tried to take every piece of happiness away from you. So here's a question and and we'll start to wrap this up, but does Ellie have a character arc? Um, no, no. Well, mm, yeah, does she gain yes. anything that she didn't know prior? That's what a character arc would be. Did she gain some sort of knowledge through her thing that she did not know before? Yes, but too late. Didn't you tell me that she was willing to forgive even though they tell you too late? Didn't they tell you early in the story that she was going to forgive Joel? Yes, but that's so she very, already learned that story, that lesson. That's very different than Joel being murdered. So technically I can forgive that to a degree. And did Abby have a character arc? Mm, technically she was more forgiving than Ellie. So I'll say yes, but she never wanted to kill Ellie. She only wanted to kill Joel, which she accomplished. Yes. So but, what's her objective was accomplished. Did she have a character arc? Nope. Not really. Yeah, played her. Yeah, no, not really. So my point is they didn't care about the characters as much as they cared about their agenda for the story, and they were willing to sacrifice convenience of the plot and convenience of coincidences and all the other things just so they could get their story across versus having... So instead of caring about the characters and worrying about like, hey, this is the story we want to tell about the development of these characters. We want to tell a story about revenge and that's what we're going to go with and that's what we're going to force feed on you. Yeah, they they forced a specific narrative down your throat, which they could have chosen a much better direction, but they wanted to go a very specific way. And for some reason, Neil Druckmann was like, you know what? We're going to really hard sell this and just dig in. Okay, well, uh, your final verdict, have we changed your opinion here? Have you gone from a 94 to any lower, or are you still at a 94? No, I would still say that this is a must play. Like wow. this, if you don't spoil yourself, so that's, that's the key element. So if you, if you read spoilers, it's going to ruin the entire experience because I went through the game and got manipulated, I guess, technically into empathizing and, and kind of falling. Like I bought into the narrative they were selling. Well, I guess I'd say for those of you out there, play beyond the Joel part. Cause that's a manipulation. Let's talk about the sales and what, what does it look like for naughty dog? I know it did very well. It's first week, but it looks like the second week is a pretty steep drop off of over 80%, which yeah. You claim is normal. I don't, I think that sounds like a little bit of shill media. Um, we also heard there were stories of it, of it not being able to be returned in Japan and Australia. And that if you go online, you can get the game for substantially cheaper and just buy it secondhand. Cause people are just returning it left and right and refuse to, they don't actually want to play it. Yeah. And there, there's a lot of people that uh, they're not wrong that the game kind of betrays the characters of the first game, which is technically true. And, uh, but anyway, so the last of us two, uh, debuted and sold 4 million copies in the first three days, being one of the fastest selling PS4 games in the half decade. Then second week, it had an 80% drop off. And that sounds, it sounds like a huge number, but when a game sells that much in the first couple days, let alone week, it, it's going to have a huge drop off. So just to kind of throw some comparisons, um, where do we have here? So do, 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 do. Uncharted 4, which is another Naughty Dog game, had a 78% drop off in its second week. And Naughty Dog didn't have any massive backlash. It had some backlash, but not massive. Marvel Spider-Man had an impressive 42% drop. So that was a game that was really critically received well. And, and had good word of math, so people kept playing it. And people kept buying it. So a 42% drop off would mean that that game had good word of mouth and people were encouraging others to buy and play it. Yes. And God of war. That's what probably, and that's another top five game of PS4. God oh, yeah, of that's war a point. had a 60% drop off. So that's not 80%, but that's still a pretty big drop off. And God of war didn't have, I can't think of any negative 
you know, majorly negative things said about God of War. Everything about that game was amazing from graphics to gameplay to story. It, it was fantastic, honestly. And it, that could still be the best game on PS4 in my mind. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot about, about God of War. God of War might be number one. Yeah. Yeah. Last of Us might be number two. Nah, Last of Us 2 Spider- might be number two. I don't think so. Spider-Man. Dude, I couldn't get past five hours. That's that's the thing. They make you rage, and then they try to walk you back in that anger, which works. Like, I, I hated that I wasn't that interested game. enough in the gameplay. Like, I will not continue playing the game. I have no desire. The See, gameplay was not intriguing enough. The story is not intriguing enough. I'm kind of just like, whatever. I don't care. If you can get through that initial two hours. Five hours. I played five hours and I was not interested. Yeah. So that uh, just to kind of bring the last of us two back. So the game doesn't do a great job at pacing in the beginning because it basically makes you watch the first two hours. Be bored. Get really fucking angry after two hours. And then there's like a 10 hour kind of drag where you're just like, fuck, I just want to have this be done. And then once you get to Seattle day three, it ramps up like the game gets substantially better. The story gets riveting in terms of trying to walk you back on your anger and, and really show both sides and, and get really dark. So if you can kind of make it past, then that's not really a good, you know, connotation. Out of twenty five games, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is I think you need to walk. That's what I'm saying. I I think it's fair to give it a B plus because if you look at it from the perspective of, you know, look, they they took some major major risks, and I appreciate that. I, I appreciate the fact that there's not necessarily as big of a woke agenda as people thought there was. And I think it's pretty ballsy to be like, we're going to kill a character that you absolutely love. And then we're going to manipulate your emotions to try to get you to really feel something about this game. There's a statement to it. And I really, I I will never take that away from them that they took that risk and that is bold, especially in today's like game making environment and in every, you know, in entertainment in general, it's, it's hard to make something this controversial and be effective and I don't think it's a bad game. It wasn't a bad game. I was just, I think the pacing is messed up and I was bored. So that doesn't help. You know, I'm sure I could have kept going, but I, you know what I mean? I'm just like, eh, whatever. It might not be the best game of PS4, but what I will say, it's probably the most resonant because even God of War and Spider-Man, they were probably overall better games. This game, I literally finished it and sat there for an hour just in, in a pitch black room being like, what the fuck? And just replaying moments from the game. So I've never had a game that I've had that happen to me. So this game, I would say, is probably one of the most resonant games. Impactful. That, sure. Impact, Whether it be yeah, negative or positive. I know people have, uh, there are certain games that have iconic moments or, or can draw that kind of emotion out of people. So, and again, I appreciate that. I think there is uh a lot of artistic endeavor and what they did. And that's why I think it's, it's fair to give it a mixed review. I don't think it's, it's not nearly as bad as people say it is, but it's also not a masterpiece. There are clearly, clearly flaws in it, but I'm going to lean towards the positive because of the risks that they took. They should have kept Joel alive. There was definitely better ways to do this story. Or they could have killed Joel just at a different time. Yes. Like later in the game. I think there is ways to make Joel die without it being like, I want to say clickbait, but I, I or rage bait. Like, I, I feel like there's a, uh, uh, they did this in a way that they were like, this is going to be real, really bold and controversial and people will be really, you know, and I, I think people are giving um, Neil Druckmann a hard time and I will actually give the guy less of a hard time based on my experience with the game and your experience so that's where we are. That's what it is. I we guess Noob Noob says play it for yourself. I say uh, respect the craft. I don't think people should be sh- shit trashing it as hard as they are. Um, I understand your rage. I didn't like Last of Us as much as some people did. It's it's just not one of my favorite games. I 
I thought it was a good story. It wasn't an, an amazing story to me. Uh, it was pretty basic as far as controls and gameplay. I was like, okay, I've done this more interesting in other games. Um, but I understand why it has its cult following. I can appreciate it as, as a piece of art as far as video games go. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to crucify naughty dog for this so i hope they have more stuff in the future that they're that they're planning and i hope they don't let this discourage them from taking risks at least i think that this was maybe a poor choice of game to do it with if they had picked a, if this had been a different game or not last of us i think they would have had a different reaction to it and they could have gotten the same point across yeah i i think they were kind of Part of me feels like they were pressured into a sequel because of how much demand there was and then they wanted to take risks and uh, it, it didn't work entirely the way they wanted to. Yeah, so, well, that's all of it from us here at Our Reviews Will Kill You. Be sure to uh, catch up on some of our other game things. We do a little bit with GTA. Hopefully we'll do some stuff maybe with Ghost of uh, Sushi. Sushima. Sashimi. One of the most anticipated games of the PS4 era is uh, coming out July 17th. Finally, I think it's been in development for like fucking 18 years. Yes, that game I'm going to be because I, I still love Last of Us 2. I think it's one of my top five games. I want to see if Ghost of Tsushima lives Sashimi. up to the hype. Top five PS4 games. Yes. Ridiculous. So anyway, from all of us here at Our Reviews Will Kill You to all of y'all in the gaming world. Uh... <laughs> 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 Yeah.